Hi, my name is Ian. I am an academic tutor at MAGIC. MAGIC stands for Miami Animation Gaming International Complex at Miami-Dade. If you are interested in learning more information about MAGIC, please check the description box below. I will be making a series of t tutorial videos for MAGIC. Alright, let's get started. Okay, start by clicking on the latest version of Unity. If you want to make a new project, you click here. If you want to add a previous project, you click here. Today's tutorial is how to use C Sharp in Unity, how to create C Sharp in Unity, and how to create variables and function in Unity, and how to use convention and syntax in Unity. First, by we will be creating a folder. You just right click, go to create, and then you can create a folder. And then you open it up. Uh, before we start, I want you to go to Edit Preferences. And here's where your script will compile. You know, it will create a script for you and for in C Sharp. But it's gonna before it to comp compile the script, uh, and you need to tell it what kind of um, program that you have to 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 compile your script for C Sharp. For me, it's uh, Visual Studio 2017, but yours might be 2019. It it just means for me I need to upgrade, but it should work just as fine. So whatever versions you have should work. All right, let's get back to it. All right, we're gonna create a C sharp script. Go to create, you can right click and go to create and you can click on C sharp. And this is where you write the name of your script because Unity generated a script for you. And there's, a, and there's another way you can create a script. You can go to your any game object, go to components, scroll down, and you go to new script, and and you give it a name, and you just hit create, and add it here into the into the game object for you as a component. And if you want to like rename it, you gotta have to click. This is where it gets a little tricky. You have to like click here, and you gotta like slightly click on it again to to read to change the name. And I think you could right click on it too. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, and that's another way you can do it too. Okay, to open up the script, you just hit open, or you can just double click on the script. Alright, you start with a basic script with a void and a update. Uh, in another tutorial, I'll go more into the, what these are. But for now, it's, it's just saying that oh, anything you put in here is going to be in, on the first, when the game starts, when you hit play, it executes the script. And it, this one will execute the script, uh, the code, like, like um, on every frame. Okay. So we're gonna use the commonly thing that has variables in the script when you write the C sharp script code. Okay, let's get started. Uh, one of the first common ones are like you create the variable. Uh, let's see. And. So what I did, what I've done here, 
is I made it public. I gave it a, the data type name, uh, type, uh, it's int, and gave it a name. And it equals, you're assigning it to, to like I'm saying 10, so you int just like whole numbers. So like if you're using it in a game, like lives for your player, it'll be 10. So, so and then for it to work in Unity, Before I do that, let me use debug log. This is where you test out things in your code. Okay. So what I've done here is I made it that uh this code right here, we'll see it in the in the console. It's this, this, this right here. All right, let's hit play. And nothing happened. And there's a reason nothing happened. Let's go, let's go back to the script. First of all, you have to save, so so Unity can compile the the code for you to use. And another reason it didn't work for any script in Unity to work, it has to be somewhere in the inspector somewhere on a game object. So we're gonna put it on the cube and you see it here. Another way is you can add component and you go to script and you see it here and it'll add it to here too. But you notice something that what we had in the script is public and we see it here. So let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so it showed up. We see it here, and it's doing it. It's doing it in every frame because we have it in update. But it shows you the code works. All right, let's add another one. A float. Uh, that's an, uh, another data type. Okay, remember to save. And you know it's loading, that means it's compiling it. Do you notice something though? It's not showing up here. Okay, the reason it didn't it didn't show up in the inspector because in Unity, if it doesn't show up in the inspector, so that means you didn't make it public and if if you don't say public they automatically assume that it's private so if you don't say anything public the unity assumes that you're saying that it's public it's private so let's make it public now it appears on in the inspector Uh, another one, another data type. It's Boolean. And Boolean is true and false. So if you want to use your logic, 
if it's true or false. And another one is char, and that's like one character. If you want to like make the player like select a certain you know logic like, like one character, you, you can use char. And the next one is string, so that's like multiple characters, ca characters like char and stuff. And most of the games you probably use it to hold text and stuff, text in your game. And you need the quotations to identify it as a string. It's the same thing with um char. So there's they basically containers, and so it, this holds the code for you. So, and you don't have to like write them again and, and things like that. So let's save it again. Uh, let's take game text. And put it here. And then we save. So we can see it in an inspector. Yes, and see how they all appear here. So let's hit play. Now, what makes it very cool is that you can change them here, and it'll overwrite the one that you read inside the. inside the script. All right, let's take a look at the console because we have the one for game, so game text. So let's see what happens. Let's see game. And if you change it again, you change it to chance to magic <laughs> but you might notice something as I stop hit play it goes back to what we originally had because when you change anything in, the, in in play mode you're like debugging so it's not gonna save it so you got to keep that in mind but if you do change something And you want to keep it you just go to you click on the, the three dots you copy the component and you hit play you unplay it it goes back to normal but you can just say paste the components value what you copied earlier and you'll get the same settings that you did earlier in play mode all right let's go to another Another fun, another thing in um in the scripting that's commonly used uh, functions. So let's, let's, let's give that a try. So there's void function. Uh, this one's not gonna have any parameters. So you use this to like hold lines of code that you don't like want to like keep on writing over and over again. And you don't want to return anything, so we can um, game text. You might want to change it to something else. Uh, okay. Uh, this one's for. 
this one. Right, so since we changed it, like you use this for a line of code, or you can like change anything from here, and you put it in there, and to make it work, all you have to do is just copy the function's name. All right, you save. Let's we'll see the, what the result is. Nothing happened. Let's see what ha what we did wrong. Oh yeah, so it wouldn't it wouldn't appear in the inspector because because you need the debug log to see the the changes. So let me just do that right now. Okay, so you save it. All right, let's hit play. All right, there we go. Uh, let's create another function. And I, so the other one is called, okay, that one doesn't return anything, so that's why it's called void. So what if you want to return something? So let's say we, re we want to return an int, and let's call it. And we're giving it parameters. So, Okay, so basically making the same thing like this one, but this, but what makes it different is is, is returning something. So if you turn it an int, so and it has parameters, so we put in a whole like numbers in it. It's gonna like take those where we put in it. It's gonna add them up and hold it into the into the int again, but as the answer, and then it's gonna return it. So let's give this a try. Uh, and now we're going to put in the function that we, we just created. Oh, it has parameters. We're going to put in, because since we already have it in there live. And when you write the, and the, when you're not using variables, maybe just hard coding. So like five, that's considered hard coding. Okay, then we save it. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the lives that we, that has the hole in the variable for the ten, and it's gonna, and this the hard code of five like I did here. So, so it's going to replace each one of those. So it's going to add it. So it should give us the answers of 15. So that's what it's going to return an uh, int. And it's going to go in here. And then we're going to see it in the, the debug console. All right, let's go. And let's hit play. And there we go. All right, so we're going to talk about conventions and syntax. So, so usually you got to name your variables and, and make it a real relative what you what you're using it for. And 
and if it's like more than one word, usually the, the beginning be lowercase, and you capitalize the letter, and so on. When I create the debug log, you notice that. Let's give that a try again. Let's go. You know, Unity has uh, one of the things Visual Studios uh, IntelliSense, so it tries to like figure out what I, what I want to type next. So like log, as you see, it, it looks for log. So, so. You hit that, and then you, and it tells you what's the parameters for it, similar to what we did here, but there's like a whole library of it. And then you notice that um, when when I call on this function, and I and I put the double slash on it, that it, it got greened out, so that's basically it's commented it out so, so when I do hit play the compiler when it's being compiling all the code it ignores it so this is where like stuff like this come in like like to give you information about what the code is what is the line of code is gonna do and there's a different one there's one where um. But this one's for a single line to comment out. But if you want to do multiple lines of comment out, you just see so slash forward. And then that's to do for multiple lines of code. Okay. So before we end, I end this tutorial. There's something else I want to show you. Let's make another script. So what if I wanted to make script B change the value of of one of the variables in in te, in, um, in test script the ones of variables that we created? All you have to do is just double click. Make it public. Get the name of the, the script. And you gotta give it a name. Usually it's best to give it a different name, not call it the same thing. So we'll call it uh, other script. So let's look at the variables that you want to change. They change lives. So live were 10, so we're going to make it 50. Debug log, so and if you you notice that when I click up here, 
I save I'll save it for this script to, for compile it. But if you click on this one, it will save it for both scripts. But I want to also before I do anything else. What if I wanted to change the? Okay, if I take out public and and for speed. And what if I try to you see I'm getting an error because speed is not public anymore so you can't so so unity turn it private so you can't like access it anymore. So that's very important that you keep the variables open if you want to access them in a, from another script or anywhere else. And see, it, it, it accepted. Okay, so. Alright, let's save. Let's try it out. Alright, let's try that where we earlier I said you can um, get the script from here. To script B. Now it's asking for this the script, so we give it the script. But it's not taking it because we didn't say it for this script, we said it for the script that's it remember I told you the script activates it when it's in the inspector, so it is an inspector, so we're gonna have to grab where the script is, and this script right here is on on the GameCube, Game Object Cube. So you just take it and you apply it here. All right, let's go check the console and hit play, and there you go. So script B access the variable that was in here, changed it, and did it from script B. So that's how you access another script from another script again. Okay. And that's it for today's tutorial. If you enjoy content like this and would like more don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you want more information about magic or 